everyone, once again, thank you for watching. This is Bruce Muffson, Sunridge of Nevada, and I'm going to do another song right now by one of my favorite artists, Kid Cudi. Um, tremendous artist, and just off the record, what I like about Kid Cudi, which he gets blasted for, is that he's not traditional in terms of the rap genre. Uh, he tends to explore a lot of different mediums of music, um, how he does songs, how he does instruments, which I find very, very creative, but which has blasted him at the times so of like he's, you know, he's not fitting in, so to speak. Anyway, he did a song um, from an album called Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying called Wounds. What's interesting with this song um, is that when he was doing this song in October 2016, in the weeks leading up to the album's release, Cuddy re revealed on his Facebook page that he had checked himself in to rehab for depression and suicidal urges. So I'm going to talk about um, depression because it's something that comes up all the time in comments, and I want to clarify again what depression is and what depression isn't. And it's interesting also, when they were reviewing the album, very few people brought up the depression issue that he had clearly was talking about in his songs and in his words. So what is, this came from WebMD, and the other stuff came from, again, thank you again, once again, Wikipedia. Untreated depression. Clinical depression is a serious problem. And it's an illness that involves literally from head to toe, the body, the mood, and thoughts. And it affects how you eat, how you sleep, and even affects your thoughts. And people who are depressed cannot simply pull themselves together and be cured. Let's try and hopefully that ship has sailed from all my videos. Depression doesn't mean you do like this. <laughs> Snap out of it. Or get going. Get out of bed. Take a shower. Face the world. If it was that easy, it would not be the, the most common reason why people go to doctors around the world. So you got to get past that. Depression is a real illness, and it affects people sometimes for years, months, even for a lifetime. Trust me. I family members that suffer from depression, and it's affected them their entire life. Once again, if you have good mental health, like get on your knees and say, thank you, God, because it's so precious to have. But depression is real. You don't just get rid of it. It's usually a three-tiered process, like a triangle of medication, counseling, and lifestyle changes. And again, the number one antidote to help fight depression, not cure it, is exercise. Exercise, exercise. I cannot stress that enough. Even psychiatrists will tell you the most, better than the medications is exercise. So if you're listening now, Stop listening to the rest of the video. Well, actually, watch the rest of the video. But go out there and take a walk. Go for a run. Do something physical. It will help your mood tremendously. Okay. What are some of the things? How is sleep affected by untreated depression? The most common problem is insomnia. Difficulty getting adequate sleep. The next one I'm doing, another song I'm doing is by an artist named Mac Miller. I'm going to be comparing something that Junior Seau um, his suicide, how it, how it was very eerily parallel to Mac Miller. Guess what? Junior Seau suffered from insomnia the last couple of years of his life. No shock. Depression and poor sleep are like peanut butter and jelly. Very, very common together. So, um, lack of sleep can cause some of the same symptoms as depression. Extreme tiredness, loss of energy, and difficulty concentrating or making decisions. Hello, hello, I'm a poor sleeper. And guess what? 60 million Americans around this country are also poor sleepers. We don't get enough sleep. Our sleep is not restful. It's very stressful. We don't go into deep REM. So issues, of, when they say things like being tired, oh, I know that feeling, loss of energy. And on, honestly, just as a personal aside, um, if you've, you guys have been watching the videos long enough, I've shrunk a little bit. I used to be about 40 pounds heavier. One of the things I gave up when I started making these videos was soda. And why was I drinking a lot of Diet Coke? And don't get me started on Dr. Pepper with lemon. Um, was because I was always tired. I, needed, I, I wasn't sleeping well. And I wanted the caffeine boost to pick me up. I got to the point that I was one of 7-Eleven's best customers because I was good for two to three big gulps a day. That's the equivalent of between 10 and 12 cans of soda. And even if you think that diet soda is better for you than the sugary soda, you're making a huge mistake. Both of them have huge impacts on your body. My agent slash producer slash, slash everything, he has a, like a, a soda-free diet. And since I cut out soda, I went from 12 cans a day, literally, to about maybe 12 cans a year 
Um, I'm not saying I feel any different because uh, I'm always exhausted anyway, but it's definitely, for me, a, a helped with losing weight. So that you get those artificial boosts. Oh, I need, I need a Diet Coke before I get to work. <sighs> Midday, I need another Dr. Pepper with lemon. <sighs> yeah, oh, on the way home, I finished another night of counseling. I'm kind of fried. Oh, I see a 7-Eleven in the distance. God bless America. We're Circle K, 96 cents for unlimited soda. They give you a cup, like 44 ounces. It's like a soda junkie's dream. And I said, like, you know, I was doing that stuff every single night. So, yeah, extreme tiredness and fatigue. Welcome to my world. And you get a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. You lose hope and you feel helpless. People say, like, I feel like I'm swimming. Uh, unfortunately, that's where Mac Miller came from. That's what happens. You feel like you, you're swimming. You don't know where the ending is going. And you have a problem making decisions. Yeah, because you're tired and you're not thinking clearly and you're fatigued. What are some of the common signs of an insomnia with untreated depression? Daytime fatigue, 2 o'clock, nappy time. What do you think that, you know, the five-hour energy is so popular today? It's treating people who really are insomniacs with depression. But if you take five-hour energy drink, glug, 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 a six-pack of that, you're artificially high, but you're not treating the symptoms of why you're not sleeping and why you have depression. And I go to, anytime I go now to a, to a case store, 7-Eleven, Circle K, whatever, and here in Vegas, it's amazing how many people in front of me are buying energy drinks. Amazing to me. People do not get enough sleep, and the sleep that they're getting is poor. You get the daytime fatigue, problems concentrating, sleep that never feels like it's enough, trouble falling asleep, and waking up before the alarm clock goes off. My mom had that problem. She always told me she couldn't sleep at night. She was about 50. Now I'm 5 plus, 50 plus 5. And I used to think like, oh, she's an old woman. What does she know? You know what? She wasn't so dumb after all, my mom. I'm doing the same exact thing like her. I don't get a restful night's sleep. Now, what's a biggie? What are signs of alcohol and depression, drug and alcohol abuse with untreated depression? It's very common among teenagers and young people and middle-aged males. And because drinking is, is socially acceptable, and they're more likely to attempt suicide. So what you're going to have is also, when you're doing a lot of drinking and drugging, I mean, common sense, you're going to have a problem with relationships. How do, you, how do you, you can't maintain a relationship when you're half out of it, when you're high, when you're not dealing with reality. So relationships are going to suffer. You're going to have secret, secretive alcohol abuse. Shh, don't look. I got a bottle in my locker. I got a bottle in my car. I put it in the soda. I put it in a soda can. I've seen like literally all kinds of ways people secretively hide alcohol and think that no one knows. I just drink vodka and I brush my teeth. Well, you can still smell it on some level. It, it's there. You see by the behavior. Self-pity. Oh, God. I can't cope. I can't cope. I can't cope. It's too much. I'm having an emotional day. Yeah. Untreated depression. Now, are the signs of untreated depression different for men versus women? It's a good question. Men, because we're men, will have more signs of anger, frustration, and violent behavior than women. Although that's changing as women become more part of the mainstream, so to speak. In addition, they may do things like reckless driving, unsafe sex. Men tend not to be aware that physical symptoms of depression, such as headaches, digestive disorders, and chronic pain can be treated from depression. Here's the thing about depression also. The Greeks understood this. They said the health of the body comes from the gut. If the gut is not stable, if you're constantly having bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, discharge, you know, you're constantly having um, problems with like burping, gas, gastric issues, it's because the body is not calm. And the stomach, where everything kind of ends up in the end, like the recycling center, the end zone, if it's not healthy, if it's not stable, it's going to affect everything else. So the head transmits information down to the stomach. When you see people constantly going to the doctor, like I can't sleep at night, I, I'm having problems, I go to the bathroom, frequent urination, blah, blah, blah. They, these are all signs there's something wrong with the stomach. There's depression going on. The body is not stable. Okay, be aware of that. Now, 
Some statistics about untreated depression. According to National Institute of Mental Health, more than 80% of the people who die from suicide have depression, other mental disorders, or substance abuse disorder. Common sense. Men commit almost three-quarters of all suicides, 75%. Here's a, here's a stickler, even though twice as many women attempt it. The thing is, years ago, and this is another statistical issue, years ago, women did not use guns. But now, because of decades of market penetration, more and more women are carrying weapons. So what's happened? The suicide for women have gone up. It used to be that women felt that they weren't going to use a gun. They didn't want to blow their face off. They didn't want to go into a coffin looking ugly. But now that's kind of faded, and now more and more women are using weapons to commit suicide. They used to use like gas or cut their wrist, things like that. But that's changing because the societal changes. The elderly experience more depression and suicide than you might think. 40% of all suicide victims are over the age of 60, adults. So it happens more than you think. The thing that goes on with suicide, and we discussed this before, I truly believe that in America, number of suicides are ranked around 40 to 50,000. I believe only a third of that has actually been captured. I think it's more like 150,000. And I've seen that from studies that people did from country coroners in different counties, but they realize the reason why people don't say it's suicide is for a lot of good reasons, religious reasons. Jewish people cannot be buried in a cemetery if you commit suicide. There's financial reasons, might be insurance policies. There's family reasons. Don't say he committed suicide. Not my boy. He was in the military. So there's all these different factors that go into not calling a suicide a suicide. Well, he drove his car into off the bridge. No, 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 no. His tires were bald. He should have changed his tires. So there's always these excuses why people do what they do. So, But I really believe the number of suicides is way, way, way higher. And a lot of overdoses, well, it was an accidental overdose. Well, it was a successful suicide. Like, they don't want to say it for what it really is because there's a lot of, you know, issues you got to kind of deal with on, on, on a different level. But be aware of those numbers. Now, they'll always go with this. What are some of the warning signs of suicide? Talking about it, depression, having a death wish, like driving through red lights, losing interest in the things that one used to care about, comments, I'm helpless, I'm hopeless, um, saying a sudden shift from being very, very sad to being very, very happy. Yay, let's go to Starbucks. Yay, I want to have fun. Um, suddenly calling people you haven't called in 20 years. Hey, I haven't seen you since high school. What's going on with you? Hey, how's everything? Remember we were in that fraternity? Hey, remember we played college football? I never said thank you. You were a great linebacker. Stuff like that. Writing a suicidal note and conducting online searches. All right. What can be treated? How do you, how, what is the success rate of treating depression? More than 80% of the people with clinical depression can be successfully treated. It can be treated with recognition, intervention, and support. Guess what? Depression affects almost 20 million people a year, including a large portion of the working population. Once again, those numbers are underreported. From going to work every day and doing the work that I do, I see depression in so many people. And so many people would just talk about it now openly. Like people I never thought would say it to me. People in their 60s, 70s, people from my synagogue, people from work. Oh, I've been depressed like the last five years. My marriage, my kids, financial issues, um, job stresses at work. I, I deal with depression every day. I cry for half an hour in the parking lot before I come to work. So many women have told me how depressed they've been over various issues. My children, lack of support from my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. Having problems with my parents, having problems in my marriage, doubting myself. Depression, depression, depression. My husband's not involved with the children. So many things go on. So I just want to say, because we're talking about depression through the song from Kid Cudi uh, called Wounds, and I want to lead into it and go from there. But I want to just clarify. One thing I'm going to talk about again is these are all good things to be aware of, but for me, looking at depression and looking at suicidal thinking, listen. Listen to the person and communicate. How are you feeling? How are you doing? People are always shocked when I find things out, when I do assessments. Like, oh my God, you never said that to me. He never told me that before. What? He told you? My husband's African-American. He hates white people. And he told you he's suffering from depression? That's unheard of. What? My mouth fell open during the assessment. You know why? I asked. 
shocking. I didn't assume anything. I said, you know what? The way you're coming across to me, you sound like you're very depressed. <sighs> yeah. Cat's out of the bag. You asked the money question. Dance, 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 dance around what's what's really going on. Like la, 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 la. Really is going on. Are you depressed? Are you thinking about taking your life? And you'll be surprised. He'll say, yeah. I, I'm at the point of my career. I don't get like, <gasps> okay, let's, let's calm down. Wife, girlfriend, husband, son, daughter, pack a bag. Let's call 911. I got to go to the hospital. I got to write up an L2K, write up some paperwork. You can't be here because you may hurt yourself. <sighs> okay. And if you get crazy, you get cuckoo. That's why there's police officers. Okay, sir, you're not talking clearly. You need to be treated. I'd rather be called every name in the book, and I have been cursed at, yelled at, F you, F you, F you, F you, all kinds of terrible names. And you know what? I put you inside. I'm glad I did. That's all. You may hate me. You may not like me. I may not be 100% correct, but you give me off enough vibes. You need to be treated. And that's the hardest thing to do when it comes to family. It's easy to do when it's not your family. But those of you that are watching this, sometimes family members need to be get help. may not be the greatest help, but they need to get some kind of help. That's what goes back to having a good therapist. That knows what they're talking about. They can ask the right questions. But so many times I've gone to homes and I just simply said, you come across as very depressed. Are you thinking of hurting yourself? You'd be surprised what comes out of people's mouths. Okay. Here we go right now into the song. Um, I enjoy Kid Cudi very much. I like creativity in music. And that's what kind of drew me to him so much. Um, because he does his songs go like, you know, totally different directions. And he's not traditional. He, he has different perspectives on music, which I find appealing. So again, this song is Wounds. It comes from Passion, Pain, Demon Slang. And ironically, a few weeks before he actually released the album, he actually checked himself in to rehab for depression and suicidal thinking. And he starts off with, you know, um, we you, we we you. He likes doing that kind of stuff. But it's, I like it because it gets you in the mood. It's jangled. That's what depression is. It's not linear. It's all over the place. That's what depression truly is. So he sets that up by giving you that right off the bat. And he goes, hmm, of course, we all have times when we're weak, when you cannot find the version of yourself you seek. You should dig deep. And he, does it. he likes using drums. The drums are a metaphor. Bam, 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 bam. Break down the depression. You got to dig deep. You got to dig deep what's really going on. Bam, 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 bam. Break that door. Break that cycle. Break that thinking. And it's painful and it's scary to do that. Because you realize I am not the man I want to be. And I give the guy credit because he, he, you know, he's a very successful, obviously, musician. But literally at the height of his career, he said, I can't do it anymore. I got to get help. And he walked away, quote, quote, from fame and fortune. But thank God he did that so he didn't kill himself. Of the four people I'm doing today, two are dead. So it, it is a factor. So to give the guy credit for what he did to walk away and publicly announce that he did it. So... It's painful and it's scary to do that. Trust me. And then he goes, hmm, don't go through extremes. Oh, baby, don't get so down. Baby, don't get so down. Yeah, because you know why he's saying don't get so down? Because the assessments that I've done and the thousands that I've done, what comes out is scary. It's the truth. I like using a whiteboard. Why? Because I like to put things behind me if I had a whiteboard. Like if this is a whiteboard, I write stuff. Oh, here we go. Like a whiteboard, I write stuff down. And I do that because I like people to see things directly in front of me. I had one guy I was doing a group a few months ago. He said, well, man, when you write it down like that, when you put it together like that, now I know why I screwed up my life. Now it makes total sense. And he goes, from now on, I'm going to try to have like a mental whiteboard before I do anything dumb and think about what you did when you just did today by breaking things down so openly. So it's, it is painful and scary. 
now that you know, now that you know, um, you know something, <laughs> a lot of times people, they don't want to know. I got families that they don't want to know the truth. Your boyfriend is having sex with your teenage daughter against her will. Or even more frightening, with her will. I don't want to know. Can't be happening. She's a liar. She's 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 trampy. She's slutty. Uh, your daughter tried to kill herself three times in the last two years. You see a pattern here? She's not telling the truth. Don't want to know. Your husband has Alzheimer's. It's not true. I don't want to know. Not true. I don't want to. I don't want to know. I think you have a drinking problem. It's not true. I just drink when I need to calm down. Well, that's fourteen times a day. But that's that's not the point. I'm not. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You can't put hands on your wife. You can't break her nose. You will go to jail for that a third time. It's not my fault. She started it. Well, th you got to think. Even telling kids, your mom's trying to get her life together. What are you doing to help things out? What are you still having sex with your stupid boyfriend for? Help your mother out. Be, be, a, be a source of help. Don't be a source of problems. So I get that so much. Um... Now that you know that, now that you know, I don't want to know. I don't want to know that I got to work on something. And that's what you do. You got to dig deep, deep, deep to find the truth. You, your truth will speak to you. Oh, I get that. Yeah, you got to dig deep. And you know what the problem is? The, the more you dig, the deeper you dig, the more raw it becomes and it's bleeding. And you're, di you're digging into the mental meat. And like, like Wolverine with those claws. And you're going down there to levels that are scary. Because you're really looking at yourself objectively. And who wants to do that? That's the most painful thing of all. And now that you know it's not fun. It's reality. And what I see out there is often ugly and horrible and frightening and scary and miserable. Because people say to me, I don't want to see it. I don't want to have to believe it. Let me get high. Let me get stoned. Because it's ugly and the beast is out and the beast is hungry. And there are times when people will say to me, Bruce, I know what you're telling me is the truth, but I can't deal with it. And you know what? I'll go through the rest of my life being miserable because to rip open that wound is so painful and look at myself objectively, I simply cannot do it. And I say to him, hey... You know what? Ultimately, it's your decision. I get it. I understand it. But I deal with a lot of trauma. My clientele is not the worried well. And they are dealing with deep, deep, deep rooted trauma that to go down deep, like he says, is scary. So when he says, I'm sewing these wounds, I'm sewing these wounds myself, I'm sewing these wounds, he says that twice. You know why, of course? Because... <laughs> Ultimately, you're the one that got to do the stitching. I can't have other people do it for me. Ultimately, I got to look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what? I got a problem here. I got a problem with substance abuse. I got a problem with my behavior to my family. I got a problem how I view myself and my, my own family. I'm the one with the problem. What am I doing about it? I got to sew up these wounds and get better. And that means I got to cauterize it. I can't have anyone else sew it up for me. I got to do the work myself. That's what he's trying to say here. And he does a really good job in how he talks about that. And when you look at that, because if someone else does it, let me be honest too, if someone else has to do that job, they're going to get sick to their stomach. It's disgusting. To look at yourself objectively and all of your fo fo foibles and your frailties and change your thinking. Imagine growing up hating people because of their skin color or their ethnicity or their religion. And all of a sudden, you realize that that's stupid and you got to change it. What's going to happen? Your friends are going to leave you. You might lose your family. You might lose all your friendships that you've ever had because it's all based around that. And now you're going to do something different? That's horrifying. Who wants to live like that? Who wants to grow? Because to grow is, is like stretching. It's like a snake shedding its skin. It gets very, very painful. But that's what growth and mental health really is. It's like... To grow, to leave behind the stupidity that you had before you and to look at yourself in a new light. And for so many people, that's so scary. I'm not talking down to people watching this, but I understand that concept. It's scary. That's why we, you know, pop, pop, pop with the pills, the drinking. Who wants to deal with reality? 
So that's the issue. And, you know, you don't know and you don't like what you're going to find. Like, you look behind that door. Look behind that door, Bruce. You may see something about yourself that you don't like to see. That's painful. That's hurtful. So I get it. He goes, we all have times when we weep. It's a troubled life traumatized psychologically. I pray in the shadows when I'm speaking to no one. And again, he uses that synthesizer so well. No words. No, no ver. You know, no words. No real chorus. But that synthesizer is like speaking to the like the randomness of depression, like the thoughts coming in and out of your head. Like I can't sleep. I'm so tired. I need a drink, man. I can't focus. I can't cope. Is suicide the only way out for me? Does a great job with that. And, you know, there's no words for how you're feeling. Because if you could explain it, you and you wouldn't be depressed. You'd be, you'd be moving forward. I get that. So, you know, so many times I've done assessments where I told people, here's what, they'll say to me like this, I'm doing drugs and alcohol, Bruce, and I can't stop. No, you can't stop. The question is, why are you doing them in the first place? Well, no one ever asked me that. They said I should just stop using drugs. I get NA and AA. I'm not knocking to do wonderful work. But why did you start in the first place? Inevitably, childhood issues. My father made fun of me. My mother wasn't supportive. I felt like a loser in elementary school. Only way I felt comfortable was to drink and do drugs from an early age. Okay, that's the issue. You have self-loathing, and that's why you're drinking and drugging. One, we got a comment. We did a webinar on drug usage, and one person said, I believe it's from out of the country, he said, thank you so much for explaining what opiate addiction really is about, not dealing with reality. That's what alcohol and drugs do so effectively, and they're so amazing at that. They're cheap, easy to get, and they, and they do their job. Otherwise, who, who, no one would be using alcohol and drugs, obviously. But it always, almost 99% of the time, stems from childhood issues that have not been resolved. And the way you mask it, because you got wounds, thank you, Kid Cuddy, is by drinking and using drugs. You don't want to deal with reality because it's too painful. I've done, I've done do dozens, hundreds of assessments where people did not want to come back because they said to me, you blew my mind, you scared the heck out of me, I can't deal with you, you frightened me. And you think, like, I'm here to help you, but in a way, I'm like the Grim Reaper. Like, everyone else was, like, told me what I wanted to hear. You told me what I needed to hear, and that frightened me. That's like going to a horror show. And you scare me. I'm not coming back to you. And they don't come back because they can't get better because they can't feel better. And I understand that. So... It's like taking out boxes filled with roaches when you're cleaning out some of these houses, helping people out, and the, and the boxes are like moldy and there's roaches in there and water bugs. You take them out into the, into the light of the day and you put them in the garbage pile and they all scatter. They scatter because there's light now, there's wind, there's cold, there's heat. Roaches don't like that. They want to stay in the damp and the muck and you know and eat, eat the paper from the boxes. You put it out there to be thrown away. And like it's amazing. Like in one or two minutes, they're gone. They're gone. No longer can they hide in the shadows. They're dealing with reality now themselves. Okay, and who wants to handle the truth? So he goes like this. I pray in the shadows when I'm speaking to no one. Myself did everything right, didn't I? So why aren't I whole? It's a great line. Great quote. I'll read it one more time. I like it so much. I pray. I'm, I'm singing like him, but I'm, I'm not even doing justice, so bear with me. I pray in the shadows when I'm speaking to no one myself. Did everything right, didn't I? So why aren't I whole? Yeah, because you know what you're saying? What is this life turning out to be? What am I here for? Blink of an eye, it's gone. Better believe it's going to be a troubled life. No, no life is easy, trust me. I could go around everyone I meet on this street, on this block, in this house, and say, if you had problems in your life, the answer is going to be yes. We all struggle. We all have difficulties. But the point is, the goal of these videos is to give you the confidence and the strength to go on productively. 
preventatively so you don't make the mistakes that I see every single day of the week and ruin your life, the only one you're going to have, because in a blink it's going to be gone. So what is this life? What is this life? Yeah. And you say also is, give me clarity and strength for one more day. Speak to myself or a higher power. So why is everything so confusing to me? And kids that are watching this, and I understand from kids, they deal with this all the time. In the shadows, when I'm speaking to no one, I pray. Myself, did everything right, didn't I? So why aren't I whole? Yeah, I get this from kids all the time. I'm doing the best I can and I'm failing. Help me not to fail. Help me to grow. You know, you better dig deeper. Better dig deeper. Don't lie to you. You better dig deep, deep. Yeah, don't lie to you is you can't lie to yourself forever. Yeah, I could pretend. I'm a great husband. I'm a great father. You, you kind of stink at it. I lie to myself. No, I'm great. People love me. I'm respected. I'm whole. You're not. It's always amazing when people say to me, Bruce, you got to see that guy. Crazy. I'm doing great, though. <laughs> I got it together. <laughs> I'm doing so well. I'm wonderful. She's nuts. This one. Yeah. The one on the right. Gray, gray. Psycho. Sick. I'm whole. Yeah? You know what? Want me to open you up like a skeleton? You know what I'm going to find there? Roaches too. But no one wants to hear that. Because it's so easy to hide, hide, hide with the wounds you have. You know what I do with my wounds? Another bandage. Another bandage. Another bandage. Hide. Oh, do I see the hiding. So, you better dig deep, deep, deep. Yeah. You know why? Because when you to do anything well in life, you got to make it happen. Just to make these these songs today, to do these four, it's actually a total of four videos. This is the third of four I'm doing today. My agent's going to chop it up and put it together. I'm a producer slash everything. Yeah, I had to dig deep. It wasn't easy. I have a lot of things going on in my life, a lot of stress. I'm not going to lie, but it's a, that's an excuse. That's an excuse, ultimately. I got to find the strength to go on. I know when I leave this house, I was telling before, I'll have like 15 text messages, you know, seven, eight emails, a couple of phone calls, you know, start calling, start texting. Not when I'm driving, dangerous, but I know what's going to happen. I got work. I leave here. I got to go to work. That's reality. That's digging deep. It's metaphorically in a multiple levels from mental health just to life itself. You got to dig deep to get any kind of success in life. Don't kid yourself. Um, so I want, and then he goes like this. Um, I've sown these wounds. I've sown these wounds myself. I've sown these wounds. I've sown these wounds myself. I've sown these wounds. Again, pounding drums. Bam, 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 bam. The, the, the pulsating. Because at the end of the video, it stops. And it's just like the, so the music. Pulsating, discordant. One last time. I've sown these wounds. Like, I'm finally, hopefully, healthy for the moment. I'm going to have to sow them again, but that's where it goes. And can I get myself put back together, unknown how, in, terms of, in terms of how deep I'm going to dig? It's interesting with football. They said that in NFL today, by the end of the season, every playing, every starting player is hurt. There's no one that goes through a season in the NFL that's healthy, healthy, injury-free. By the end of every season, by the end of that 16-game season, every starting player is nursing a significant injury. And guess what? You play through it. You have no choice. You got to dig deep because your ultimate goal is that Super Bowl. Every player in the NFL has a significant injury that they're battling, that the average person will knock them out for a month. They'll say after the season, after the season, after the season, because you got to dig deep to try and find success. You got to dig deep to try and find success with mental health. Let me clarify a couple of points. Telling people the truth is what I do, and it's brutal. Because you're getting people to say things to you that they don't want to hear, that they're uncomfortable about. But that's what I do. I'm a truth teller. And why I use the whiteboard is explained again. As someone said to me when you, when you write it out like that, like I said before, I can clearly see the mistakes that I made. 
and find a real friend that will really be a friend because so few people truly have them. And that's something I've learned as I've gotten older. True friends are so far and few in between. And in the end, when I like those words, I show my wounds. Let me tell you something about therapy. It, I can talk all day long. I have no problem filling up a conversation. But it comes down to you, the person I'm talking to, and what you're going to do with it. And here's the thing metaphorically. I tell people to do this also. When you go to bed at night, before you go to bed at night, stand in front of a wall, stand in front of a mirror, and metaphorically get naked and analyze your day, what you did for the day. Were you good? Were you kind? Were you a jerk? Were you a moron? Were you helpful? Were you friendly? Were you just caring only about yourself? But do that metaphorically and just give us comments how you feel about that kind of stuff, like opening up your soul into what kind of person are you. I did not, I got, I did write, why am I not whole? Okay, you know why people say that to me? I did it the right way. I take medication, Bruce. I go see a therapist. I change my lifestyle. You know what, they're not whole? Why was I molested, Bruce? Why did God make me this way with a disability, with mental handicap, mentally challenged? Okay. Why do I have to go up in a culture that hates me because of my religion and they, and they attacked and killed my family? I take pills. I went to therapy. Why am I still shattered? A woman talked to me a few weeks ago about being molested and, of course, led to her using drugs and alcohol, having horrible relationships, terrible career path. She said to me, in my mind, in her mind, she said, it's like taking a mirror and throwing it from the third floor window onto the street and watching it shatter into like just gajillion pieces. And then going down to the street and trying to put that mirror back together. Trying to find the tiniest fragments of glass. Slivers. You know what? You can't. She said, no matter how much work I do, my head is still shattered over the abuse I endured sexually from my father and my uncle. Why am I not whole? I've done the best I could. Trying to put back pieces is often very, very difficult. And I understand that. I don't talk down to people because I know the struggles that they're trying to survive with. And here's the thing, too. He goes, don't lie to you because we all lie to ourselves. No one knows that I'm depressed. <laughs> I just tell them I'm feeling real good about things. I'm crying at my desk, but don't ignore it. <laughs> Ignore the man behind the curtain. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Yeah, Wizard of Oz. You know, no one sees me drinking. Yeah, I hide it so well. <laughs> I'm so sharp. I'm so sharp. No one sees that my life is spinning out of control. Guess what? Everyone sees it. Everyone sees everything. And why am I not whole? That's a million dollar question. Because we have to work on it. Because that's what life is. You don't. You're born and you die. We don't. We're not, we're, 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 in a sense, we're born perfect. We're born perfect with the idea we can work on ourselves. We're not animals. We're not vegetables. We're not minerals. We can work on getting better. You don't have to be the idiot that you saw from your family with the doofus parents that brought you into the world and had no clue themselves. You don't have to. You don't. You, the way you start does not mean to mean the way you have to finish. This song is an anthem to get help. Don't do it alone and accept that re recovery brings with it shrapnel. Kid Cudi suffered from depression, suicidal thinking. I think there was some alcohol abuse as well. And again, just because he's Kid Cudi, international star, doesn't mean he doesn't have issues himself. But he's smart enough to realize I had to get help. And learn to listen. For those of you that are going to want to help your friends that are suffering from depression or suicidal urges where you notice that they're drinking too much, taking too much drugs, listen. Learn to just listen. Hear what they have to say. Listen. The other tips are all good. Some of them are getting a little bit creaky, but, you know, a little bit old. But the one about listening to me, listen, and don't be afraid to ask a money question. And if you're not sure, go to a real therapist, a competent therapist, get an understanding of what to say, what not to say, and watch how it's done. Because when it's done the right way, it can be super effective. So for those of you watching this video, take this all into account. 
Good luck with everything. Good luck with your depression, a friend's depression, family's depression. But get help. Don't endure it. It can be treated. Thank you.